It's my personal choice. But yes, and in a free society, the opinions of other people also have to matter. Not, it's of not course, just about you exercising of your course. choice. The way What's up, YouTube? Hope you guys are feeling good. My name is Eleru, and today I'm back with a new video I want to check out with you guys. This is called It's Highly Undesirable. Douglas Murray schools Muslim activists wearing niqab in Britain. Hmm. You know how it goes, guys. We talk less and we react more. Let's check this out. My, my mom, my sister, don't wear it. It's but, me. It's my personal choice. But yes, and in a free society, the opinions of other people also have to matter. Not, it's of not course, just about you exercising of your course, choice. The way other fine. people feel about that should be of some concern to but you. But you know, these a feelings are coming from naked. negative prejudices. We, we have coming from You don't want men's opinions? No. No. You don't want men's opinions? No. I'm sorry. Okay, we are going to have to end it there. No, I'm really sorry. I the only man I'm sorry you don't want to hear men's opinions. You are about to see Douglas Murray tell the truth as it is. <laughs> Douglas Murray debates a panel of Muslim scholars on the influence of religion, particularly Islam, in the West today. Douglas Murray speaks what is on most people's mind today in the West, but what most are afraid to say. Douglas Murray did not hold back. Can I just begin with you, Fatima? Yes. 56% of British people don't really support the wearing of the full face veil in public. They don't want it. Uh, well, I think it depends on where you where you take the poll, really, because, um, well, uh, something that I've recently launched is a project called Secrets of a Muslim Woman, and it's all about letting people know uh, why we do what we do, because I think a lot of it is to do with not really being familiar with it. You know, I mean, I, I mean, my message to the British public is that you've got nothing to fear. You know, this but is they a piece don't of feel cloth. that, though, do they? Because <coughs> elsewhere in this po poll, a majority said they don't know how to relate you know, to a know, woman like... wearing a full face veil. I think, you know, the people who have actually interacted with women who wear the face veil, people who work with them... I mean, we're in East London today. In East London, the veil is practically, you know, normal on the streets of, of East London. Uh, people who've actually interacted and worked with women who wear the veil have absolutely no problem with it. Douglas I think Murray, it's a fear of the unknown. Douglas Murray, would you like to see the, van the veil banned? Here? Well, I think like a majority of British people, I think that it should be banned in public places, particularly places like courtrooms, where it's absolutely imperative that a jury are able to ban? see the faces of uh, people who are accused. As for an overall ban, I think, look, I, I, my own opinion is that niqab is highly undesirable. I think that we live in a society where people do show their faces, where huge amounts of our social interaction depend on people showing their faces. I think that it's very difficult to enforce a ban in public places like streets, but it should be a, certainly a desirable so thing to discourage its wearing. to impose a ban, but in principle you'd like to see one because you think in Britain in, it's unacceptable. In public buildings, in courts, in schools and places like this, absolutely, I think a ban would be very sensible. In streets and so on, I think it's difficult, but it should be societally discouraged. <laughs> Douglas Murray's stance on the ban of the niqab in public spaces in the UK, particularly in sensitive environments like courtrooms, is grounded in a broader argument about the fundamental requirements of a liberal and open society. A significant portion of human communication relies on facial expressions and visual cues, which are obscured when the niqab is worn. This impediment can hinder social interactions and, more critically, the basic operations of institutions that rely on facial recognition and expressions for identification and communication purposes. Douglas Murray's argument is supported by statistics and public opinion trends indicating a growing discomfort with the niqab in the UK. Surveys, such as those conducted by YouGov, have shown that a substantial majority of the British public supports restrictions on wearing the niqab in public spaces, especially in places where identification and open communication are essential, such as schools, airports, and courtrooms. This sentiment is not isolated to the UK. Similar attitudes can be observed across Europe, with countries like France, Belgium, and Denmark implementing various bans on full face veils. The Muslim activists counter-argument that negative sentiments towards the niqab stem from a lack of education and interaction with Muslim women who wear it, while calling for more understanding, overlooks the practical implications of such garments in public and civic life. It's essential to differentiate between promoting cultural sensitivity and recognizing the operational necessities of a society's public and legal systems. Beyond practical reasons, the niqab's presence in public life raises deeper questions about the integration and visibility of women in society. Critics like A.I. and Hirsi Ali have voiced concerns that the niqab may symbolize the segregation of women from public life and the suppression of their individual identities. Such perspectives are crucial 
in the debate over how liberal societies should navigate the delicate balance between respecting cultural and religious practices and upholding the principles of equality and openness. Accommodate religious expression in this country. You know, Jehovah's Witnesses who don't want uh, blood transfusions, uh, Sikh people who want to wear turbans. We, we make exceptions, you know, in, in certain situations. And so, look, you know, I really want to reach out to the public and say, you've got nothing to fear from us. But take up Yasmin's I was born in this country. I love point. this country. Take up Yasmin's point. But this is about exceptionalism. The, 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 take up Yasmin Alibi Brown's point about this is about exceptionalism. It, we, we, not, make, cannot... accom we accommodate, don't we, in this country, and in my country, Britain, we accommodate uh, religious expression. We yes. do make exceptions yes. for people. And there's nothing, and that's what I no, thought. And we cannot destroy up in this country, the minorities but, and the religious belief a... in the name of equality. <laughs> but we what have... if the majority feel uncomfortable? feel uneasy and say they don't want to. I think then the onus is on us as well, isn't it? I mean, to, to actually reach out. And I, I'm hoping that this is just going one step mm -hmm. towards that, to say to people, look, you know, we're human beings just like but, you. But if I may say, we have quickly, to hold that. Uh, religious freedom is an extremely important thing. And I think most people who would agree, I hope in this yep. room, that Britain is the most tolerant place in the world to live, including as a Muslim. Yeah. Um, but let's just add one thing to this, if I may. The issue of social interaction is very important, and not just to me, but obviously to a majority of the British people. Yeah. What I say tonight, what Yasmin says and other people say tonight, people see our faces, they know who said it. I'm sorry to say this, but nobody knows who you are. They can hear your name, they can't see you. I'm if I say something stupid on television tonight, people know it's me saying it. If you do, with all due respect, you can disappear and no one knows. No, we're not disappearing. You can see us here, come the on. The meaning of this thing is extremely important to, to address. The meaning of this thing is women are by nature dangerous to Not men and society. No, no, Therefore, no. they must be covered, they must be buried. That's the meaning of it. And that's what I cannot accept. <laughs> Douglas Murray, aligning with Yasmin Alibhai Brown's commentary, emphasizes that the niqab symbolizes more than just a religious or cultural garment. It represents a deeper ideological stance on the role and visibility of women in society. The niqab reflects a view that women are inherently a source of temptation, necessitating their physical concealment from the public eye to maintain societal decorum. This perspective inherently contradicts the principles of gender equality and individual freedom championed in liberal societies. This critique resonates with broader feminist analyses of veiling practices. Scholars and activists argue that requiring women to cover their faces in public is a manifestation of patriarchal control over women's bodies and choices. Such practices, they assert, not only segregate women from the social and political life of their communities, but also reinforce the notion that women are primarily responsible for controlling men's sexual behavior, thereby perpetuating gender inequality. Statistics from various human rights organizations underscore the impact of such ideologies on women's rights and societal integration. For instance, reports from the United Nations have highlighted how dress codes enforced on religious or cultural grounds can impede women's access to services, employment, and education, limiting their opportunities for personal and economic development. The encouragement of niqab wearing in public settings not only hinders women's visibility and participation in public life, but also symbolically takes a step back in the hard-won advancements for women's rights. The niqab, in this view, is not just a personal or isolated choice, but a public statement with implications for how women's roles and rights are perceived and enacted in society. This was a tough one. Uh, okay, first and foremost, I'd like to say that in the society at large, everyone can get what they want. I mean, you have to forego some things for others to be comfortable. That's the truth. Now, in this case, the topic in contest is the wearing of the niqab. Now, if this certain religious sects choose this mode of dressing, I believe since it's their choice, they should be left alone to do it. But then, as society is evolving, just as Douglas rightly pointed out. There are places where you need face identification, where your face needs to be seen. And in certain public places like the schools, the courtrooms, yeah, this particular culture has to be foregone to some certain extent. 
just to allow the due process to take place. It's very correct. Because at some point, people in the culture, especially since majority of the of the citizens in Britain don't actually support this. They would like to see who they are talking with. They'd like to see who is at the is at the boot standing in the case of a courtroom. They would like to see who it is that they are speaking with. You know, you can imagine a judge totally veiled presiding over a case. No one knows who is there. No one knows anything about the person. I mean, it's going to really, like, tamper with their mental ideology. That's the truth. But other than that, I I believe there's nothing wrong in exercising your choice. I mean, freedom to live the way they want. She's clearly a citizen of the country. She has the right to do, act, and wear whatever she chooses. But there are some certain places where these laws or these choices have to be suppressed even if it's for just a little bit so as to ensure societal comfort that's the word to ensure societal comfort to make other people feel at home with you and Miss, mrs fatima said that she relates with people well i mean clearly looking at the way she's engaging this conversation calmly handling it i believe just as she said they are humans too i mean they should be given the benefit of the doubt but as Douglas also said, there are certain places where they need to tune the tune down this uh, form of dressing. Just as I said, for societal comfort, especially since majority of the community where they live don't agree with it. This does not mean that they should do it all the time. This does not mean that they should totally forego their religious aim. No, they should just act in accordance with the laws of the country when the country says do this at a certain place don't do this at a certain place i mean due to their government standards i believe those laws should be followed like i hope you guys get my point though but tell us what you think about this video in the comment section and leave a thumbs up at the end of this video thank you all for watching and stay safe <music>